So hey everyone, um, I'd like to introduce um, someone to you that's been a great friend and we met, well, like two years, was it two years, Vince? Probably more like three years at this point. Yeah, like three years, yeah. Or so two and a half. Yeah. I met you when you were like 16, 15, 16. Yeah, and end of 16. Yeah, um, never gonna forget the day when you DM me on Instagram and we started chatting and then it escalated pretty fast, right? Then we like meet in person in Budapest and we realized that we have a lot in common and we shared a lot of things about our entrepreneur journey. So I decided I just gonna brought you over here to YouTube so I can introduce you to my audience and what you do. So please tell me a little bit about yourself. Most specifically, how did you get into entrepreneurship? Um, for sure. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me. And uh, well, so the story in a, in a nutshell is, um, well, I, I would love to say something like I always wanted to save the hungry kids in third world countries and stuff like that. But to be honest, like my initial reasoning of why I wanted to get into entrepreneurship and making some money is because um, when I was little, I was a, I was a huge gamer. And uh, if you guys are ever played basically video games online, you know that you can buy in-game purchases like skins and stuff like that. And uh, I always wanted to have the, the cool items in the game, right? Uh, but I obviously didn't, like, I couldn't really ask my parents for <laughs> buying me stupid things like that. So I think that was kind of like the first time I, I wanted to make some money, like really wanted to. But I mean, even in middle school, I was always kind of interested in the concept of, of money. Like, how come some people, you know, are super wealthy and most people are not? Like, what what makes this difference and what makes this huge um kind of inequality in word um and uh yeah that's kind of like when i first got i guess interested in it but at that time obviously i didn't know even didn't even know what entrepreneurship was i think i didn't know it until i was 15 or so um but yeah so the question was how i initially got into it right yeah yeah like what yeah yeah what was the first hook point really yeah, so I think it was around the time when I was 12, 13, when, like I said, I just wanted to buy in-game purchases and and buy nicer, like, gamer PC and mouse and, and those sort of items. Um, so I tried a bunch of different things, to be honest, uh, after that. Um, but uh, that was kind of the first thing that got me into it, I think. And I also love, just... Sorry yeah, to cut you off, I actually ahead. love, I love those stories when people... Um, just mentioned their first few attempts or like the businesses kind of the businesses they've been running right yeah uh, drinking sipping whiskey <laughs> oh, no, it's just some just some uh, <laughs> apple juice of course of course so uh <laughs> just tell me a bit tell me a little bit about your your attempts your first attempts to pretty much make money like any kind of money the yeah sure ones. sure so i guess the first one was um trying to do kind of like esports uh sport betting and uh skin trading so yeah basically in like csgo and team fortress 2 these are all like online video games there are in-game items kind of like nfts mm -hmm. that are worth real world money so you could trade those or or you could even bet on like actual uh video game or esport games and there were a lot of people who were making some money with it obviously nothing like proper money like now that i know how much some people actually make back then i thought like if you could make a hundred bucks with that I, a month I, I thought that was like insane but well, obviously it's like nothing in the real world but that was my first attempt and i made a couple bucks with it but nothing serious like i don't know like a hundred bucks 200 bucks probably in total um and then after that i uh tried well i tried looking up on youtube how you can actually make money i think that was the time i was around 13 14 years old um and i first found um drop shipping i uh gave that a shot but i had i think 150 bucks to my name i i ordered in some uh, inventory like 10 pieces or something i first tried selling like those uh i don't know if you you remember but there were those um clip on phone lenses that would make your yeah, phone yeah. Uh, like wide angle uh, because back then they didn't actually have like a built-in wide angle lens in, in the phones. 
Uh, so I, I want to sell those, but I didn't have money left for Facebook ads. Plus I couldn't even get an ad account set up because I wasn't 18 yet. <laughs> and my parents wouldn't agree to let me run the ads from their account. So yeah, I just set up the website, like made the, the uh, whole promo material and everything and never ended up getting any sales. So that was my first, I guess, attempt. Um, and then I tried affiliate marketing. That was also something that a lot of people were saying you could make like a shit ton of money with fortune uh, right yeah and uh i mean some of you guys might remember clickbank that was like the biggest yeah. kind of affiliate marketing network back then um probably still is pretty big and uh i tried selling uh weight loss teas <laughs> uh with that or tried uh, promoting that and uh well i was weight basically loss teas. yeah weight loss teas Didn't so that. that the market for that was basically post-pregnancy moms and just in general like moms who were mm -hmm. overweight and wanted to lose weight without having to do anything probably <laughs> uh <laughs> so i was commenting on like blog posts like saying oh this tea helped me so much <laughs> and it's shit, shit like that and looking back i'm not the most proud of that because probably have you, ever, have you ever tried that tea before oh of course not i i <laughs> didn't have any idea about the product <laughs> and whether it worked or not so i'm not the proudest of that but to be honest, I didn't really even realize that it wasn't a good product at that time. I just wanted to like make some sales. Uh, but good thing is I didn't make any sales after trying that for a couple months. So <laughs> nobody, nobody got scammed out of their money with that. So that was my like second or third attempt. And then I also always wanted to be a YouTuber. So ever since I was like 10, I was always making YouTube videos, trying to become a gaming YouTuber and make money from that. Um, in the beginning, I obviously didn't know that you could make money with that. But as I was learning more and more about YouTube and making videos, I saw that other people were making money from it. So that's kind of when I first realized like, okay, there might be something into this. Um, but my channels never really took off. I was making gaming videos in Hungarian and they were super boring and, and cringy. And I had like a super high voice, high pitched voice. So yeah, not many people are listening to say the least. Yeah, I was getting like six dislikes, one like per video. And that one like was probably me. Or maybe if I got two likes, it was me and my friends or my mom. So, so yeah, that didn't really take <laughs> off initially yet either. And I tried a bunch. I had like five different channels because for some reason, I always thought like, oh, yeah, the problem is not with my content. It's that the channel is shadow banned or it's not working. <laughs> so, yeah, I tried that. And then finally, after that, um, Around the same time when I was like 13, 14, I really got into filmmaking. I started watching a lot of filmmaking YouTube videos, learned how to do editing. And even when I was making my Minecraft videos and gaming videos, I had to learn how to do editing, right? So that was, uh, that was actually all of these different things that I think I tried were kind of all, always still building up these skill sets that I could later on use um and mm -hmm. and help me a lot in the future because even when i was making the shopify thing I, I had to learn how to write like copy even though i wasn't good i mean i was still learning i had to learn how to edit photos how to put use a website how to use photoshop all these different skills uh which ended up being pretty valuable in the future but yeah so after that i um i had like I think at like 15, I had like a pretty decent skill of um, editing and video. So I first tried doing freelance video graphy um, in Hungary. And uh, I did a couple of videos and I, I didn't get paid for any of the first ones that I did, but I ended up getting like a, a summer internship at, um, at basically like a Hungarian media agency. And I got paid, I think like 30 bucks a day uh for shooting um videos and i was working well i mean i'm not gonna mention the company's name because that's probably illegal but i was wor working at that <laughs> week those weeks like what was your age what was your age at that time i was 15 and i was okay. we were working on the hot sun in the summer for like 13, 12 14 hours a day so if you break it down it wasn't actually that good of a pay <laughs> In, no, in no, hourly really. <laughs> but i mean at that time it was huge for me because uh, uh that was the first time i started making money for myself properly um uh, but yeah at that point i realized like okay like this freelancing thing here locally is not really gonna make me <laughs> rich right uh okay. so after that i um 
thought about how else I could make some money. And then I started doing um, freelancing online and I reached out to like dozens of um, YouTube creators who I was watching already. Um, Cause YouTube was always kind of my television. Like that's what I was using for entertainment. So it kind of came to me naturally. Like if I wanted to get some editing gigs online and make money for my time, like I could just reach out to all these YouTubers. Cause I already know how to make thumbnails. I already knew how to do editing. Cause I learned it uh, by making my own videos at that time. And yeah, one of them uh, luckily got back to me, started working for him and then uh, started getting paid for my edits, like 10 bucks a video or something like that. And it slowly snowballed from that to the point where I think after like six to nine months after that, I was making some like proper money. I mean, not huge may, money. May but I stop like, you over here for a sec? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm Go ahead. Super, I'm just super curious. So maybe just told us how you fall in love with YouTube and also like ultimately like content creation. I'm just super curious. What was the th- things that made you fall in love with YouTube and content? Yeah, good question. I think it was probably partially just that I really enjoyed the process of uh, creating something uh, kind of like tangible or like Mm -hmm. documenting the moment that you could watch back later on. And also I, I I didn't really ever think about it. It wasn't something that I was like conscious of, like consciously choosing to do it because I love that part of it. I just really enjoyed the whole editing process, like picking music and, and creating something uh, tangible. But also I think it's, it, I just always found it fascinating how you could create something and then like hundreds or thousands of other people could watch that same exact thing that you created online. And I, I was never really conscious of it because I grew up with social media and I thought that was normal. But I mean, if you objectively look at it and think about it, I think it's pretty wild how that is even a, a, a real thing that you can just watch other people's work online uh, and other people can watch your work and hear your message and your story and kind of you can entertain other people on social media. So I think that was probably like a big part of it, but I just wasn't really conscious of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Makes yeah. Sense. Okay. So how how your how your entrepreneur journey evolved from here? Yeah. So after I got my first uh, like editing client, freelancing clients online, that was actually an American guy. So that was great because the pay was a bit better, and also it was already in the entrepreneurship space. It was a, a podcaster guy called Omar Alatar. He runs a channel called The Passionate Few. <laughs> And I was already listening to all his interviews and everything. So it was super cool to be able to work for him. And um, yeah, basically he also kind of mentored me. So I'm I'm really, really appreciative of him because he helped me a ton uh, throughout my journey to get things started. And then uh, partially through his connections and then also just me reaching out to people and being able to leverage the fact that I was already working for a pretty big name. I managed to get more editing clients, right? Some of them uh, higher and higher ticket as he was teaching me on how to do sales and how to charge more and all that. And I was also learning on my own. Uh, And then I got up to the point where I was making probably like three, four grand a month uh, freelancing when I was 17, I think. Yeah, 17 or 16 and a half. Just Um, so so people understand, you're from Hungary, right? Like what what is the average salary? in the city where you live or what do you think it is yeah like it's probably or or someone. probably like six seven hundred bucks but that's not even net like that's before taxes so i think i mean it's a good question to be honest i i always said it's like 500 bucks but i think it's a bit more by now so Maybe, in, yeah. in the capital city i think it's like a thousand bucks on average but yeah i would say probably most people take home like net 600 bucks or around that so yeah. it was like a substantial amount of money compared to that of course like i, that, I mean that, i wanted to i wanted this yeah. to sit with the audience just to like just so they understand because i know you know most people are not from hungary is yeah that to exactly. make three four grand uh, at the age of 17 16 yeah. you were at I, I'm, to be honest i don't remember exactly but if i would think back like i, I think that was middle of 2019 so I'm 19 now. So that was uh, three years ago. So yeah, I was 17 if I'm yeah, right. 16, correct. 17. 16, 17. Like 17 that's, yeah. That's enormous amount of money at that age. If you call Oh, yeah, it was 16 actually. Yeah. If I think like, back. Yeah. 
probably like zero 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 one point seven one percent or something like that. I don't think a lot of people at that age are actually making any money at all. Like yeah, because most people don't even try. I think yeah. and are not interested in it. And I'm not saying that in a condescending way. It's just like a fact. Like you must That's be a reality, pretty big. Yeah. I think you need to be a pretty big weirdo to to even want to do that at that age instead of like playing with your friends or or playing soccer or whatever. Uh, and a big reason why I was interested in the, in the first place was I was always kind of an outcast in school. Like I, I had friends, but at the same time, I, I didn't really have any like super deep friend connect, friendship connections. The only ones I had were with my friends who I was playing with online and they were in, like in-person relationships. So that was a big part why I even wanted to do it because I, I kind of found um, like I found some respect uh, or I guess like fulfillment mm-hmm. from making money and and uh and learning an online business i got kind of my my sense of of respect from that instead of from real life Uh, and i'm not saying that's super healthy but i think that was just uh, the reason why i even wanted to do it in the first place i see have you have you ever tried teaching your friends to do the same like to make money online because you are there at the age of 17 with all that money and you should it's be fun. like, you should probably be it's like, funny. hey guys, like I found something that, you know, maybe work for you guys as well. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I would have gladly done it. I would still gladly do it uh, even for free, right? But nobody ever asked me to to help teach them because like the I only had, I think, one person who was interested in what I was doing and whether they could do it for themselves. Mm-hmm. And when I explained them like what it's going to take, they were like, oh, yeah, I, I actually don't want to do it. <laughs> like most people aren't willing to sacrifice, uh, I think, especially at that age, um, so much to just have this thing that doesn't have that much utility at this point. Because when you're living with your parents and everything, like real life hasn't really kicked in yet that you need money to survive and to do things because you're, yeah, you, you get your p- food paid for, you get uh, free shelter uh you have all this free time you get free entertainment like you don't really have that much use case for money and i think like yeah it's just it's just not something most people want to do at that age or like just a really really small percent of people are interested in it Mm -hmm. um so yeah but uh, yeah going back to the story just to sum it up quickly so after I, i was freelancing for a good amount of time I thought about how I could scale this operation up a bit more because I was running out of hours. Like I was working before school, waking up at 3 a.m., editing client videos, and then getting back from uh, school exhausted and then doing some more client work and just going to sleep early so I could survive. Um, So yeah, I was not sleeping much. I was just super exhausted. But at the same time, like it was still all so new to me that it didn't feel like that. Like looking back, I don't know how I could do it to be honest like I couldn't do it now I I didn't I don't have that amount of work ethic now (laughs) that I did back then but it just seems completely seemed completely normal to me back then um but yeah I was thinking about how I could scale this up and then I found a guy called Iman Gaji um who was in the agency space and talking about how you can outsource the work and focus on getting clients on retainers and I was already doing that so I was like already unconsciously running an agency, but I wasn't outsourcing it. I was just like a solo agency owner fulfilling all the work and all that. So yeah, I I hired um, my first kind of like editor who was in my already existing filmmaking friend circle because I was already interested in that space. So that was a a good thing that I could pretty easily find someone I can trust. Uh, Obviously it took some adjusting to learn how to, to outsource stuff, but Yeah. And then, yeah, from there, I just started, kept getting more clients, outsourcing more part of the work. And then uh, it took me a long time actually to get up to the point where I uh, first made six figures with the creative agency um, because I didn't really have an offer or a niche or I I mean, a lot of evolution had had to go through it, going from just like, I will edit any videos for you if you give me money to having like a clear offer, a clear outcome that people want, a clear pricing structure and all that. But yeah, it took me around like one and a half to two years to get up to the point where I first made six figures with that um, business. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, after that, I my personal brand also started picking up a bit more like the YouTube channel, but uh, yeah, that is kind of where I'm at. I still look at myself as like in very, very early stages of my journey. 
but yeah, it's been it's been uh, exciting, uh, you know, thing. <laughs> I see. St- so Vince, what is it that you do now? Like, how do you? Because like people from the outside, people see your Instagram, probably your YouTube. Um, so just for those people, you just like go and scroll a little bit, and you understand your story. Just yeah. so they understand, what is it exactly? How are you making your money right now? Yeah, so uh, I still have my creative agency where we help uh, basically YouTubers mainly and personal brands who want to sell more of their online programs and uh, basically just grow their channels uh, on YouTube without having to edit their own videos, do their own thumbnails, do their own descriptions, do their own SEO. Like it's kind of like an all around service. Um, But percentage wise, that have become kind of a smaller percent of my income because I started focusing a bit more on uh, my own personal brand and going that. Um, So last year I saw like a a really nice and huge increase in my um, YouTube channels audience, which I'm really grateful for because it's been a, a, it's been a dream of mine for almost 10 years at this point. So it's been really, really nice to finally see that slowly coming to fruition. And also I always kind of on and off after I had my things kind of going uh i always kind of on and off helped some other freelancers who wanted to get higher ticket clients because the problem with most freelancers is that they really struggle with sales and and kind of Mm -hmm. the business side of things and i always kind of on and off help people with that and how they could build a similar Mm -hmm. agency to mine and uh basically everyone who i was helping one-on-one have gotten great results with that help that I initially just offered for free. And then I started charging some money for that as more and more people were interested and it took up more of my time, but it never really was my main thing. Like I was always just focused on the agency as the main thing and then had uh, some people who I was helping on the side. And uh, beginning of this year, I uh, started kind of like a proper company around that, uh, which is called Clients for Creatives. Uh, which is a consulting business that helps um, freelancers and small agency owners who are in the creative space. So doing offering services like uh, even social media management, content creation, um, graphic design, you know, copywriting, all of these kind of more creative based Mm -hmm. services that are not specifically PPC uh, and, and Facebook advertising or Google ads. Uh, but I mean, we have helped a couple of people who are in that space as well and got great results with it, but that's not our main focus. Right. Uh, and I started this business kind of together with Greg, who is actually someone who I helped, uh, initially start his agency. And now he's doing really well with that, doing around 20 K a month, um, with his content creation agency. And, and, um, the way I look at it right now is he, he also wanted to help other people to kind of achieve this same transformation that he went through with my help, mm-hmm. but he always enjoyed uh, running his agency way more and didn't have the time to launch an offer like that. And I also liked my agency for the longest time and I'm still, I still wouldn't say I hate it, but I found more enjoyment in the actual consulting side of things. Mm-hmm. So it just made sense to me naturally to, kind of get both of us together in a business. And uh, this way I could really focus a bit more of my efforts on uh, the consulting business and he could still keep the agency as the main thing and uh, even help me with my agency and keep everything going. And I could just go all in on the consulting business and make sure that the customers get good results in that. So yeah, so I have that as well. Um, So to sum it up, I have uh, my agency still going. I have the personal brand, which at this point brings in like a good amount of money through AdSense revenue, affiliate marketing, uh, and yeah, those, and and I have a couple of affiliate offers. So those are like the main um, things and also some sponsorships now. And, uh, and I have this clients for creatives um, consulting business, which is the, the newer thing. And these are kind of the three main things I have. And I, again, it's usually a bad thing to have multiple things or multiple businesses. But to me, the YouTube agency and the clients for creatives business is really tied together because almost it's they almost like each the, other at yeah, the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. So it's not really like two separate businesses because the YouTube is also a lead generation source for the consulting business. Uh, and they really, I mean, it's, yeah, they really yeah, work from, together. From what right? I understand, it's one business, two offers at the end of yeah. the day. Right? Yeah, exactly. So I, I more so have like 
two businesses. But with the agency, uh, I also am going to have Greg more and more uh, helping a bit more and more uh, with that. So I could put even more focus on the other thing. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, hope that kind of made sense. And uh, yeah, that, that is kind of everything I'm doing right now. Plus, I'm still finishing up school <laughs> last year of high school um, in two months. So I, I have a bit of uh, things on, on my plate, but yeah. And it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's that's a good topic. What's your advice? Just just you know, like super simply for all those people, because actually I know there are some people in my audience who are like in that phase. They're like, I like entrepreneurship. I want to make money. I actually had a client signing up um two weeks ago. He's I think he's like seventeen, and he's like, oh gosh, like I have to do this, but I want to grow my business. What is your two cents for those people? Yeah. So because I know you've is, been tear, you've been torn in between whether to finish or not, and and now you just you know made up your mind and you decided that you're just gonna like execute and finish it. Yeah, how do you exactly. feel about that? Yeah. So I mean, the first option where I would look if you don't want to drop out is um, homeschooling because it is something that in most countries everyone can apply for, and even I could get approved for it with the reasoning that I want to run my business. So if you can get approved with that reasoning, I think basically everyone can get approved. Uh, it's just something most people don't think about. And homeschooling can save up a lot of your time. Like I, I don't spend much time on school, to be honest, at, that, at this point, only before I have to prepare for my exams. Um, so that's the number one thing I would recommend if you are really torn between the two, because then you're still not dropped out, but you have a lot of your time that, you know, freeze up um and yeah i mean would i mean that would be my main piece of advice i guess if you haven't tried that out but other than that i think you are and i I need to remind myself of this as well because i have still used like school as an excuse in my head on why i can't grow my business to a certain point while i'm still in school but you are capable of a lot more than what you think even when you are in school you have still a lot of time left and you don't need that much time to start growing a business, I think. Uh, yes, you do need a lot of effort, but it doesn't have to take up like your whole day. So if you're making zero money, like you can still get up to 5K a month uh, while still being in school. Um, if you just put in those extra hours when you are not in school. And even when you are in school, you can still send outreach messages and shit like that. Like I used to do that. Screw that, actually. Uh, like you just need to sit in the last row of the class. And, you know, the, usually teachers don't really care or even in breaks you can send like outreach messages stuff like that so uh, that would be my my two I guess uh, main advices and uh, I guess with dropping out it's a whole different topic Um, I was really torn between the two but to be honest I mainly did it for my parents like I wanted to drop out plenty of times but I'm actually quite glad that I didn't drop out now because like now I'm, I'm almost gonna almost finish with it and uh, I'm not saying that it has any real value in the real world. I like probably no one's going to ask yeah. for my high school Keep diploma. But, uh, but still, I mean, at least it's something. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not going to I mean, you're being it. challenged, no? Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely a mental challenge. If you really yeah. don't want to do something, you still end up finishing it. I still don't see too much value in it. But uh, I, I didn't regret not dropping out. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, but I mean, just the fact that you are being challenged and you're being kept accountable because at the end of the day, you have to like you have to answer those questions, right? So it's not something you can just like procrastinate. If you're an entrepreneur, I guess, and that's my take is that let's you're like 17 and you're like, well, I want to drop out. I want to start my own business and that's all I want to focus on. But in reality, something that may happen is that you're just going to have a lot of excess time that you're going to spend on YouTube watching a lot of videos and to be honest, that's, um, I've seen it plenty of times. It's just, it's comfy. It's fun, yeah. right? Like you watch some videos on sales, but as, as soon as you have to be in front of a video and you have to sell, it's not that interesting anymore because it's like not comfy, right? So as opposed to actually trying to learn clients and, and implementing the knowledge you have, you start watching videos on Bitcoin, right? And then as yeah. soon as, and as, and as soon as, you know, it gets hard and gets complex and you, you are about to go into deep into like the crypto world, you start watching videos on mindset or something else. Right. So yeah, I never actually go deep. You just like watch all this surface level content 
as opposed to if you are like if you do what you do right now you are short on time right you have to you have to answer those questions and then you're being mentally challenged you learn that you have to push through certain things and you have, have to actually put the knowledge in action like you have to answer those questions so i think if you know not the actual knowledge you get at least you are you learn to like tackle some obstacles as opposed to just sitting at home because if you sit at home and watch all those videos no one gonna you know there's no yeah. accountability you can do that forever i did the Definitely. same like and two I think three hours also... on youtube while i was eating food going nowhere yeah. i felt like yeah, i'm it... getting smarter but in reality i just had more knowledge i was not really getting much smarter yeah, definitely. And I, I fell into that trap, trap like many times as well. And I think school also helps you kind of learn how to deal with idiots. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, it's true that, yeah. Like you will encounter the same type of people in business as well that you encounter in school, whether that be actual students or teachers. Like some, of, some people are just idiots, let's face it. Uh, and it's not necessarily because they want to be idiots, but whatever, their life circumstances and everything kind of like, I mean, again, there is also a different perspective on who's an idiot and who's not, but you will deal with difficult people in school and, and go th through like difficult arguments. And I think that can also be valuable in school, uh, in business, because if you run an online business, you don't really meet anyone in person. And that's something you will probably lack a bit. Like I, I noticed that on myself that I do lack some of the social skills um that some of the other guys in in my class uh have developed a lot more um so that's one extra thing that i think it adds but overall Dude, i, I would just say like I don't that. overthink like, it meaning like meeting difficult people in difficult situations let's not, let's not call them idiots but they have like a different perspective <laughs> right and so yeah. meeting those people from what i understanding i can also confirm like in like in business when you when you try to do something you're dealing with people as well right and those people are not going to see the world the same way. And that's just fine. Like, let's just accept that, right? So when you are in, in that environment in school, what you are finding is you're trying to like, hey, this is how it's supposed to be. And they're like, no, 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 this is how it's supposed to be. And there is a gap. And then you're sitting there and you either just piss them off and you're never going to get there. Or you figure out a way, a mentally challenging way to get them through your side or at least understand their perspective and try and move them. And that's already a valuable skill. Uh, one good example I can see is when I try to sell people, people who are like really spiritual, they don't like sales. And that's understandable. Like people who are like meditating all day long and they want to help people from the inside, like to feel better. They don't like selling people. They have a different connotation to sales. So when I talk to those people and I mess it up so many times, I have to be really careful how I present sales to them because we teach them sales, right? And as soon as I try like you know, really like presence, hey, you're going to close so well, it's going to be like, they're like, I don't want to do that. And they're just not going to sign up. So I, I need to learn, like, you know, you have to always um, change the approach depending on how difficult they are, or how they see the world. And I think yeah. that's something you learn as well, right? Yeah, that's something you definitely learn how you can talk to different people in a way that makes them feel good. So they do kind of what you want them to do. I mean, I guess you could call this manipulation, but... <laughs> At the end of the day, that's, uh, I guess but that's partially it. I mean, I mean it, it depends. But... It depends because if I say someone, hey, you're going to be the Michael Jordan, of, you, you know, you're going to be the next Michael Jordan of sales. And they're like, bro, I don't even want to play basketball. I kind of need to make them understand why, you know, at least playing basketball helps them to be sporty or whatever, right? So just have to give them their perspective of the story. As opposed to trying to like pitch them on like, oh, you're going to be the next Michael Jordan, but they just don't even want to, you know. I guess I, I kind of understand that. What, what I really meant is, especially if you are have entrepreneurial tendencies or you think of the word in a different way, if you are still in high school or, or even college, probably um, you will see that most people don't think the same way. They don't have the mindset that you have. So that will make you have to learn how you can make other people feel understood about their view, like how you can make other people feel understood that you understand their worldview and that you accept it. But at the same time, you can still hold your own truth uh, kind of, but, uh, and, and that I think just that process can help a lot with how, yeah, how you deal and how you talk with different kinds of people. Like for example, the way I talk with my teachers uh is completely different to how i talk to my friends or or even my some of my right. clients uh but i have learned 
what are the main things that like I, if you can learn how different kind of people in different life situations think and what kind of worldview they have on the world, you can talk to them in a way that validates their worldview. And I know, again, this can be called manipulation or whatever, but at the same time, if it doesn't hurt anyone, I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. Yeah, that's, that's it a helps big one, you Mike. get what you want. Like if yeah, I can talk to a teacher in a way that makes uh, that person feel very understood and makes them feel like they are valuable and that I, I appreciate them, which is true. It, it has to be true at the end of the day. But if you can communicate that, they are going to help you to get what you want as well. And this applies to all different areas of life. If you just understand what people, what different kinds of people want, then you can uh, talk to them in a way that makes them feel understood, which is what everybody wants at the end of the day. And then they are going to help you as well with whatever you are trying to get. That's so true. That's so true. You summed it up so well. So basically, like we can call this manipulation. I think it's, it has a really negative connotation. To or maybe influencing. I think yeah. that's probably a but in nice reality, word, like if you but... look up, I actually did because some people are like, oh, this is so manipulative. Like if you look it up by definition, it's not a bad thing. Like if you look yeah, up, it's, what a, it is, it's just a tool yeah. that can be used probably yeah. both in good and bad ways, um, depending on what you think is good or bad, right? Like everything yeah. is relative. So it's like, it's like, do you like fly like airplanes, right? Like if you use them in a, in a war, Obviously, if, if you use airplanes to kill people, bad, right? If you use airplanes to take people from A to B and to have them accomplish something, it's great. You can travel. Or yeah, stuff. Or, or a knife or whatever. Yeah, like, so exactly. it really depends Yeah, like how you use it, how you use the actual tool. And let's just, let's just, let's just leave it here. Like it's really about yeah. connecting to people, right? Exactly. Like if you, if you speak your own thing, they don't get you this connection, right? If you can understand how they see the world and then you can, you know, kind of relate to them and communicate, then you can kind of lead them if that's your yeah. ultimate goal. Yeah. Definitely. So when, one question I have in my mind, I, I always, I, I think it's, uh, it's a really vague question, uh, but how much money do you think one needs for a good life? And let's just talk US dollars and let's just talk about the, you know, you ask us hunger is completely different, but how much, yeah. how much money do you think they need for a good life? Well, first of all, it's hard for me to talk in the U.S. because I haven't lived there. Yeah, that's uh, true. Then. But <laughs> I mean, you uh, could just—I guess, like four X, whatever we have in Hungary, or yeah, something like that. I like, would say anyone watching, you can just look up, like you know, what's your what's your average salary, stuff like that in your country, and like deduct that, like divide. I would say multiply. It's so. I think it's so depending on the person and their priorities because some people are in like everybody is in different stage of their life uh, and that means they have different desires at that certain time of uh, of their life right so if someone is in a phase where uh, they really want to get sort of the more material things out of their uh, out of their system like they want to get the nice car they want to get the watch they want to get a nice place whatever and I think that's okay as well like I, I don't judge anyone for that and I'm sort of in some way still in that phase of my life when I where I do have some items that I want to get and, and uh, experience and even though I know that everything gets old after a couple months and it's not the end all be all it's it's still something I want to experience before I uh before I die right so if you are in that phase I mean depending on the level of aspirations it might be a lot more money than others like you might actually need 40 50 grand a month to live that life in the us for example um and i think that's fine as well like i i totally understand it and i don't think there's any right or wrong way to to go about life it's um, all about circumstances and yeah what exactly want. but i think in general to to have like a good safety net where all your necessities are met and you're living like comfortable lifetime lifestyle i would say in the us it's probably like 20 grand a month uh if i if i multiply what i think is fine for me here uh, and that's like a comfortable lifestyle but you have you know taxes coming off from that and everything but at that point if you are just living alone you can still travel you can buy uh, the best like healthiest and nicest foods um you can have good equipment you can live in a good enough space um and i think you can have most of those main things that um can kind of elevate your overall 
I guess, like lifestyle, but just don't expect those things to, to change your inner reality. If you are I all fucked it. up, right. If you are all fucked up inside, you're depressed and everything, like don't expect those to make that, uh, that much better. Um, but I think, yeah, you do need like a good enough safety net to where you're not having to worry about how you're going to pay your bills and how you're going to get food and all that. Cause in that, I think that alone can probably be uh, like a pretty big stressor that takes away some of your happiness, but after a certain point, like it's not going to give you, it has money has diminishing returns. That's something that I heard hear a lot from Alex Hormozzi. And I, I would say I, I totally agree with that from what I have experienced so far. But at the same time, I might have just not made enough money yet. Like, who knows? Maybe if I make five million, I will probably say like, yeah, it is actually quite nice to have five million a, mm -hmm. a year coming in because uh, I haven't experienced that sort of life yet. You will have more options, but you will have more responsibilities generally as well. So. I don't really have an answer for this, to be honest. I think most people... I think people, you answered it pretty well. Yeah, yeah I just most want to people, hear your perspective. In like most countries, really knows, right? Yeah, most people in most countries will be very, very fine with 10K a month profit coming in, I think. In the US, for example, if you have like high aspirations as well and want nice things, you will probably need more like 30, 40 grand uh, before taxes. And maybe somewhere in like Bali, you might just need like three, four grand a month to live like a perfectly amazing life where you're also putting money away. So that's what, what do and, you think it is yeah. for you? I'm just curious. Like, vid again, depends on where I live. But, uh, but I for you right now, like, what, what is the amount of money that you feel like it's enough for a good life right now in your? Um, okay. So I think there is a distinction between like overall money coming in versus how much you spend because i don't spend nearly as much uh to maintain my lifestyle as i make yeah i'm talking uh, so there is like i'm talking income okay. money that comes in where you can okay. pay so, for everything you want to and set us and put aside money that you feel so, secure okay so i don't really feel good about spending more than 30 percent of my income on just mm -hmm. living and uh I, that's probably like pretty conservative to most people but the way i look at it is like every month uh, I spend less than 30% of my income. I basically save two months of living for the future. Uh, like if I work for a year and I save 70% of that money, I get two extra years of uh, living very free because I know that like I have two years of ex extra expenses saved up. So that's how I look at it. Like I see. Wealth, wealth is, again, this is also something I heard from Alex Formosi that like wealth is uh, not really a number. It's a ratio between how much you spend and how much you earn and how much money you have saved up for the future. Like if you have a hundred years worth of uh, your expenses saved up, but you only spend 300 bucks a month, like you're still wealthy because you don't have to work basically. I mean, aside from inflation and those sort of things, like you don't have to work a single day in your life to live the same lifestyle that you are living at that point. So uh, for me, I'm, I'm feeling like oh like comfortable with uh, eight to ten grand a month in my country mm -hmm. with my current certain circumstances because i don't really spend more than like two grand a month to be honest in most months uh which i think to most people it's like shocking but yeah if you don't live in like a high gdp or super expensive country you can get you can have a re really nice life with two grand a month um but i'm sure that if i will move somewhere else a, a bit nicer that's probably going to be more like six to seven grand a month in what i spend and then at that point i will need more like 30 40 grand yeah. uh, a month coming in to feel secure so yeah. to yeah, sum it up it really it really depends it really, it really depends, depends on what you want and also about. where you live and like your circumstances yeah but i think in in general it's a good rule of thumb not to spend like to strive not to spend more than 20 30 percent of your income because that gives you like a lot of nice and extra safety bet you know yeah. Because like awesome. the way I look at it is, is when you're in business, you're kind of almost uh, a, and a lot of times like an NBA player, like you, who knows how long your uh, income will last and you can always make your money back. I believe in that. Like, I don't think the internet is uh, and the future. I don't think it's a scarce thing where we won't be able to make money online after a certain point, but you know, things can happen. You can go back down to zero basically any month. I had that two times where I went back down to zero and have to be, had to build up again. So uh, just yeah, try to save up some money as well for the future. That's all I'm saying. I see. Also, I feel like this has been a really insightful, really great interview so far. 
Um, we can wrap it up over here if you want to, but I still have a couple questions on my list about work-life balance and happiness. Because to me, those are the topics I really want to hit on nowadays. Yeah, definitely. Let's go into. So if you want to, I, I think time. I think a lot of people would benefit from. So you already told me one of your biggest dreams was to to have like to have the YouTube channel and to have like a significant amount of people following you on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I remember we were talking about this. And then lately you started really growing your YouTube channel. You had some viral videos. Yeah. Uh, so my biggest question is you when you had no subscribers or you know, just a few subscribers, you must have had an idea in your mind how happy you're gonna be when you have that. And then Looking yeah. at you right now from the outside, I'm like, holy shit, Vince has like 37k or what you have right now. I don't know, probably around that. Yeah, you see, you don't even really exactly know the number, right? But like, I think when you had like a thousand, you know exactly like it's 925, yeah. <laughs> 926. So my question yeah. is, because I think a lot of people will find this interesting. How is the happiness you derive from that YouTube channel and the growth of it now compared to how you imagine it to be? Oh, it's like, literally not existed <laughs> like i don't and, and i don't want it to sound like ungrateful or anything but it's not even something like i i think about or i mean to some extent yeah, it's always a nice thing to see the comments saying how that certain piece of content helped them and seeing people being grateful but it's not like they are it's so weird because it's you don't really your mind cannot really wrap your hand head around the 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 numbers right because you if i see 37k it's like okay that's like a pretty big number compared to a thousand but it's like nothing compared to 10 million but there are actually like i don't really process that there is actually 37,000 people in behind their computers who have clicked lot, on yeah. subscribe because i don't see them but if all of them were here on my, in my street like i would be like holy shit that's a lot of people um so yeah it's a, it's a weird thing like i i i thought that it would be a huge thing obviously um to i think it's always like this with the numbers have that, right? but, like, but yeah it doesn't feel anywhere near as exciting or as good as as i thought um, you said something very important that stood out like you said basically to sum it up you said it's not about the growth of the actual number where you derive the happiness from but instead it was the feedback you got from helping those people Right. Yeah, definitely the feedback, but but also the growth. I mean, it it brings you some happiness to see growth happening. Uh, because I, I I am still like feeling a lot better when I'm getting uh, mm -hmm. progress in certain area of life than if I'm just stagnating or or going down and declining. Sure. Um, but it's just, what I'm saying is obviously as you as things grow around you, your mind adjusts to it. Like there is this concept called hedonic adaptation, where your your feeling of happiness and well-being always goes back to your baseline and that's the same thing with how much money you make same thing with how many subscribers you have so probably the happiest you're ever going to be is when you're just starting out and seeing the a huge change in uh in your numbers compared to where they were like when you're just starting out the channel or you're just starting out the business and you go from zero to i don't know 5k subscribers or zero to 10k a month or 5k a month like that's going to be probably the happiest mm -hmm. and most excited you will ever be about that and then you will have to find i mean about the numbers and then you will have to find something deeper to keep you going after that point that's my point of view on this yeah absolutely and i agree with that i think that's well said okay let's go into work-life balance mm -hmm. like what does work-life balance means to you and what does it look like to you right now nowadays yeah so i definitely would say i'm not an expert on this topic by any means i haven't you don't done, have to be like i, I don't I think i've done too much actually. research on this and and what's the most ideal way to go about work-life balance but i definitely had uh periods of my life where i had zero work-life balance and i was just always home al alone working and uh, after a certain amount of months, you just start feeling miserable or I started feeling miserable. So I, I figured out that wasn't really a good way to go about it. So <laughs> now what I try to do is I uh, try to just work throughout the week and then have one or two days uh, on the weekend where I meet up with either friends or family uh, and just spend time with people like that helps me a lot. Um, also, 
I don't know, some people would probably put like the gym and watching a documentary or, or those things into the life category instead of work. But I, I look at them kind of the same way. Like it all blends together in my, in my daily routines. Uh, I mean, the, going to the mm -hmm. gym uh, and having some lunch, like whatever. I, I, I also look at those as kind of work if I do them the right way. Um, so I don't really have like a work-life balance on a day-to-day uh basis from monday to friday i just try to hang out with people and have some experiences on the weekend and also generally i try to have different seasons in my life um so i try to have like a couple months of hard uh core pushing where i try to really move the needle forward in um, the business life and then i try to have like a couple weeks of pullback where i just try to maintain and spend way more time with family and friends uh, and more time just relaxing and recharging and sleeping more. Uh, and I kind of try to just change these two seasons up um, all the time. I see. So to, so to summarize, for you, it's like taking weekends, mostly weekends off or like a day or two off every week yep. uh, when you don't really do work. And then having seasons of, you know, seasons of growth and seasons of push and then seasons of just like, kind of letting it go letting it be and uh, yeah. recharging right yeah exactly cool so that i think i think that you do that very well in my honest opinion i feel the same about that like to having these seasons are super important having a day or two off a week it really helps you with recharging being excited about what you do right because yeah. if you like continue seven days a week it's that's a lot right like you can really tire yourself out so I, yeah, yeah definitely. I totally agree. And you will get, I think you also always get better at this as you go through the different years. And like, as you go through more and more years of, of running a business, uh, in the beginning, I had no idea about how to do it. I still don't really do, to be honest, but I, I, I keep seeing the pattern. If I look back over the last three or four years of making a small improvement every year on how I can uh, handle my time and handle my emotions and all those things. So I'm just really hoping that, you know, 11 years from now, when I will be 30, I will be like a pretty badass uh, person at managing their emotions and their work and their family and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Like my two cents are like the way I look at the whole thing is that when I talk to people and they're like, dude, I'm trying to find my work-life balance. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I just can't find it. And my question straight away is like, hey, dude, like, have you ever tried to work as hard as you can? Like crazy hours, like seven, like nonstop, right? Like Gary V vibes. And they're like, no, I'm like, okay. And then, you know, some people work really hard. They're like, dude, have you ever tried to like, just fucking like chill out for a month, do nothing, right? Like really just try experience. And they're like, no. And I'm like, so like, how are you supposed to find balance if you have never met the extremes? Yeah, and then they're I, like, I, I do sort of agree with uh, that for sure. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and it's, it's, I think it applies for all areas of life, like fitness, gym, building a body, whatever you're building. I think once you experience extremes and you really like, you really deeply experience those, it's much easier to find the balance because you have more information of the extremes. Yeah, and also you can experience how those extremes feel for you, like yeah. how you feel in those stages. Because I, when I tried the extreme of working as hard as I can without having any social life or whatever, I felt miserable. But also when I had, I literally took off like two to three months of, of not even working, I felt even more miserable. So the balance That's the point, right? is like, like somewhere... Them somewhere between the two and uh, yeah if you if you experience both of these then you will have a better perspective on which one is right for you and how you feel good consistently for a long period of time gotcha so Vince what are your goals for for this year or for the future what are your big like the big goals the goals that matter it's not like financial is that but what, what is really your goal for the year or yeah for, for the future so I definitely want to help a lot of people with um, freelancing uh consulting offer like helping the freelancers uh, with the clients for creatives um, company or project and uh, the number I have in mind is to help a hundred freelancers with that so so far this year I think we are at like four so <laughs> definitely have a long way to go but uh, hopefully things are gonna start ramping up we'll see 
uh, and also would like to grow the YouTube channel of creep creating content that helps people and uh, that people find valuable and, and want to keep watching. Right. Um, and other than that, I have uh, a goal of going to the gym five times a week. And, and uh, I really want to bulk up a bit more uh, this year and put on some muscle. Get, but... get the guns out, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing I found difficult is like the eating part, like how to eat, enough food uh without not being able to work mcdonald's <laughs> man mcdonald's all the time <laughs> yeah kidding. don't do that uh, don't listen without me. having got all the brain fro- brain fog yeah brain, brain frogs fog. <laughs> it's something you always said but now i, I know can. that's my you're taking dude uh, you're copying my style yeah. yeah um and and yeah other than that just uh spend time with family and um with friends and create cool experiences and um, yeah, that is kind of uh, the main things I have that are in my control, I think, to some extent. Awesome. So Vince, um, I really appreciate you being with us over here. Um, I have no more questions. I think we went through your whole experience and how you look at life and how you build a business. So I'm super glad we did it. I think it's a great interview. Where can people find you? Where can people find more information about everything? Like. Well, what are your channels? Yeah, here's my address. It's hungry. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, if you come here to my street, you will find me. Um, working. <laughs> Fair enough, right? Like, knock uh, on my yeah. door, bro. Here's yeah, my that address. actually pretty funny if someone said their address and like, yeah, yeah, you can find me. Here be anytime. careful. Like, my followers are like really honest, genuine people. I like, just think yeah. it's going to go. Um, jokes aside, you can find me on YouTube at Vince Opera or Instagram at Vince Opera or Facebook at Vince Obra. So yeah, you can find me Easy. On, on most of the platforms with just putting my name in and uh, yeah. Easy. So the people, so the people are watching, if you are, if you have any interest in content creation, you want to build a business around content creation, you want to build an agency around content creation, then Vince is your guy, not me. That's, that's, you know, clear to me. So that's why I brought him here on this one. So if you ever, spoke to me you have any interest in that one give him a follow and hit him up and um be another one in that 100 people i think gonna help change lives so i really appreciate that and um yeah thank you for having me and uh hope you guys enjoyed this uh, quick little interview style thing and uh i guess uh see you in the next video and yeah, also yeah, check we're, out we're gonna the do another interview one, like... yeah check out the interview i'm gonna do with blaze as well on my channel Awesome. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace. Peace.